Hey, this is Leach with Simpson Math, and in this video, I'm going to be doing some examples covering basic probability. In my previous video, I went through the basic rules or kind of formulas for uh, basic probability, um, specifically the multiplication rule or addition rule when events are disjoint or um, independent. So let's take a look at a few examples real fast. So this first one says, a consumer or organization estimates that over a one-year period, 19% of cars will need to be repaired once, 6% will need to be repaired twice, and 3% will require three or more repairs. Our first question, oh, sorry, it's, uh, it's, I skipped a part. What's the probability that a car chosen at random will need? All right, and then the first one, it's that it will need no repairs. So I'm gonna choose a car at random. What's the probability it doesn't need any repairs? Um, well, when I look at this question, I see that um, if a car is repaired once, that is disjoint from being repaired twice, which is disjoint from being repaired three or more times. So since these are disjoint, I can just uh, add the probabilities up if I'm needing to add up like one or two. Um, so that's gonna be helpful. So I'm just gonna be using, following the addition rule for disjoint events like we covered in the last video. Um, so I kind of made a little probability model here. We know that probability models, um, that each probability needs to be valid, meaning it's between zero and one, and they all need to add up to one. So we know that from the problem, 19% will be uh, repaired once, 6% will have two repairs, and 3% will have three or more. So they do have that or more part because there might be you know, four or five, 12 repairs. Um, so the first question is what if there's no repairs? That would just be zero. Here I've defined my event just with the variables, just for some efficiency, said that X is my number of repairs, and so then it could be zero repair, one repair, two, two repairs, or three or more. So if it's no repairs, um, based on the information given to me, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out what's the probability of one, two, three or more, or basically one or more, and then subtract that from one, because remember, all uh, the sum of all the probabilities, the sum of our sample space must be one, so that's why I know that I can add these up and subtract from one. So really, at the end of the day, just add these three numbers up, subtract from one, and you'll get this 0.72. If you want to see a little bit more formally documenting it, uh, this is what I would do. Um, if I'm just trying to get the answer, um, like this question is just wanting the answer, it's not needing work, honestly, I would just you know add that up in my calculator, subtract from one. But here's the math. Um, so the probability that X is greater than or equal to one, so meaning there is one or more repairs, um, if, if I subtract that from one, I'll get the none. Well, one or more, based on the given information, that would be uh, if they're prob if they have um, if the card just has one repair, two repairs, or three or more. Well, then we know the one is 19% or 0.19. Exactly two is 6% or 0.06, and three or more is 0.03 or 3%. Be mindful of that 0.03. So notice how they give us 6%. Um, that is not 0.6, that would be 60%. So just be careful when it's single digit percents that we have that extra zero in there. Um, so that way that reads as 0 0.06 or 6 hundredths um, and, that's, and not 0 0.6, which would be 6 tenths. All right, so then we just add these up and we get 28%. Uh, one minus that gives us our 0.72. So 72% of cars, according to this, uh, would need no repairs. Next, uh, what if we select a random car and it requires no more than one repair? Um, so phrases like no more than, at least, no fewer than, uh, all those things kind of hurts my head. I have a master's in mathematics and it hurts my head. I kind of have to say these things out loud. So I uh, will often visualize this what's in my head. I think of a number line um, and often I kind of do it with just my three, uh, with three fingers. Um, so I think of the number itself, the one, I think of the number before and the number after. So uh, with my three fingers, I often think of that this one is the middle number, that the number before it uh, would be the zero and the number after it is the two. So I kind of test the number on it and then bef before and after. So in this case, I ask, is one no more than one? To make this tangible a little bit, I think of maybe if I was asking someone to get me some candies or you know, if this is one or two, maybe cookies. If, if I was asked my husband, oh, oh, hey, can you go get me some cookies from the kitchen? If, if he's like, sure, how many do you want? I say, oh, no more than one. If he comes back with just one, I'm okay with that. One is no more than one. If he comes back with no cookies, I might be a little bit upset, but it did say no more than one. So zero cookies is in fact, no more than one. 
Um, but two would be more than one. That is not no more than one. I kind of have to say it out loud for it to make sense. So two or three or anything bigger does not work. So no more than one is just zero and one. I'm a tangible visual person. Um, so I'll either draw this or visualize that in my head, or sometimes just like to imagine that, that these are three numbers on the number lines, like a zero, one, and two. All right. Um, so since it's um, no more than one, I can just find the probability of zero and the probability of one and just add them up. We just found that the probability of zero was 0.72. We were given that if, if it gets repaired once, that's 19%. So we just add them up and we get the 91% or 0.91. You could, the other way is, especially if it's maybe shorter, in this case it's actually a little bit more work, but suppose that uh, maybe adding up the, the, one, the two that I want might be, um, might be, or adding up the ones that I do want, might be a bit cumbersome. It might be easier to do some subtraction. Um, it's not necessarily easier in this one, but it's helpful to see. So I could do, I could find the probability that I get two or three or more, and that's a 9% chance, but I don't want that 9% chance. So I'm going to do one minus that. That'll also give me the 91. Let me visualize that up here on the table. So I want these two. So I could just add them up and ignore these two and be happy. Or Actually, I just I could also think I don't want these, so I can add them up, subtract them from one, and I'll get the sum of these two. So either method works. In some future problems, when we have maybe 20 things and I want no more than seven, um, sometimes that might be helpful to do the other way around. Actually, in that case, I want it, if I want no more than 17, it might be easier to do uh, the other way. Uh, last thing on this one, if there's just some some repairs, we're being asked for just some repairs. Well, some repairs is if I have one repair, that's some. I, you know, I got something. I got some some amount of repairs. So that's one, two, three, or whatever. So basically, not zero. So there's two ways of doing this. I just documented. Uh, we just add up the given the given information, uh, which is what we did at the beginning of part uh, part A, um, and so we get the seven, the twenty eight. Or um, another way we could do that is if we since we've already figured out what zero is. Um, and I don't want to look back at my work for some reason, I could just do one minus that 0.72 to get the 28%. All right, let's move on to the next question. This is a very similar question, just dealing with candies. For a certain candy, 15% of the pieces are yellow, 5% are red, 10% are blue, 5% are green, and the rest are brown. We're going to pick a piece of candy at random. What's the probability that it's brown? Um, so let's do that one first. One, again, these colors are disjoint. If I see a candy that's yellow, um, uh, then I know that it's not red, it's not blue, it's not green, it's not brown. Um, so they are disjoint. So I can just add the probabilities. Um, no stress there. So what's the probability that it's brown? Well, since it says the rest are blue, this is just like the, the last question. I need to add up all the colors. So 15 plus 5 plus 10 plus 5. Um, and when I do, I get 35. Subtract that from 1 and we get our 65%. I didn't bother to write down all the details because honestly, if I'm working this question, if I'm not needing to show my work, um, I'm just going to add them up and subtract from one. Um, but this might be helpful to kind of see those pieces because that will give me the probability of all of the colors. Just subtract that and we get our brown. All right. What's the probability that it's blue or yellow? Again, since it's disjoint, um, I can just add up my blue and add up my yellow. So 10% plus 15% gives me my 25%. What about the probability that it's not green? We're told that 5% are green. So if it's not green, that's just the complement of green. So 100 minus 5 is 95%. So that'd be 0.95 or 1 minus 0.05 would, would give me the 0.95. Um, so that's just the, the basic complement process. So that 1 minus. Um, we're going to, in our next question, um, we're going to have to be, again, knowing, our, knowing how to do complements quickly. So that's not really something we need to stress with too much with showing work. Lastly, with the probability that it's striped, well, what? Striped? Striped isn't one of my options. Uh, they're just solid colors. So the likelihood I reach into this bag of, of candy and I pull out a striped is a 0% or, or, or proportion also 0. All right. Um, so following that same, that same setup, now we're um, talking about um, pulling multiple candies. We're going to pull three pieces in a row. And we have this little assumption that the problem nicely tells us. It says, assume that we have an infinite supply of these candy pieces from which to draw. So what that tells us is that candy colors are independent when drawing multiple candies. 
Why would this matter? Well, if this was a little fun size bag of candy and I'm reaching to a little fun size bag of maybe 10, 10 candies, as I start pulling out candies and not replacing them, that's going to be changing the problem and making it making one color, the color of the first candy no longer independent of the second. That's a bit of an issue that makes a problem be a little bit more difficult and we're not quite ready for that. Um, so this one is just assume you have an infinite supply, a really, really, really big bag. So when I pull out a brown for this first one, um, that does not change the color of the, that does not change the probability of getting a brown on the next one. So we, we have independent uh, events here. All right, so the probability of picking three brown candies is, all right, um, so the idea here is we're drawing three pieces in a row. So imagine I reach in this infinite bag of candy and I pull out a brown, and then I'm going to pull out a brown, and then I'm pulling out a brown. Notice I'm using the and here because every time I pull out a brown, I'm making a more specific, a harder to happen, a rarer event, a less likely as we discussed last time, that's going to be in, that's going to lend to an and situation or a multiplication thing because it's going to make the numbers get smaller. As in our previous question, if it was um, yellow or blue, was that pre previous question? Let me skip back here. Yellow or blue, I knew this was an or when it says so, and I knew that we're going to be adding because if it's like, oh, I'd be happy if I get a yellow one or a blue one, it's going to increase that probability. It's going to make me easier to be happy. So that's why it would be adding. We're going to be increasing. So here it's an and situation. Um, we're told from, uh, or sorry, from our previous part, we saw that brown was uh, 65%, 0. 0.65. So um, it's going to be probability of brown times probability of brown times probability of brown. Well, probability of brown is 0. 0.65. Um, so we could re-express that as just saying 0. 0.65 cubed. Um, if I'm, you don't have to do that. You could type 0. 0.65 in three times, but mathematicians were efficient, lazy, but accurate creatures. So I, I'd rather just type in 0.65 cubed, it's faster. Uh, and when we do, rounding to three decimal places, we get uh, 0.275. Next, the probability of the third one being the first red one. So I'm gonna reach into my bag of infinite candy and pull out not a red, and then I'm gonna eat it. Then I'm gonna reach in the second bag, pull out not a red, and then, sorry, gonna, I said second bag, I'm gonna pull in, pull out a second piece of candy and get not red reach into the bag, and then my third piece is going to be red. So not red, and then not red, and then red. So again, this is an and situation, rare, harder, more specific. So it's going to be a multiplication thing. The probabilities are going to go down. Um, so in, another way of saying not red is our red complement. Um, so we're going to be multiplying red comp probability, probability of red complement times probability of red complement times probability of red. Um, our problem tells us that the probability of red is 5% or 0.05. So not red is going to be 95% or 0.95. So I'm, I'm going to replace these values. And I get 0.95 squared, because it's just two of them, times 0.05. And this is actually, uh, in this innate obvious situation here is called a geometric distribution or situation. You don't really need to know that. Uh, it might show up in a later chapter. Um, but it's kind of innate just to kind of build that structure. Not red, not red, red. Multiply that out and we get 0.045. So that's a very uh, specific situation, just about a 4.5% chance that that happens. All right, what's the probability that we get that none are yellow? In our previous video, we talked about this. Um, we could just jump to this because it's the probability of no successes raised to the power of whatever, however, however many times you're going to do this. The long way is just thinking about reaching the bank, pull out not a yellow, pull out not, not a yellow, pull out another not yellow. Uh, we can, of course, express those as complements, and we're multiplying them. Uh, we're told that yellow happens 15% of the time, so not yellow is 85% of the time. From last time, um, we, um, we said that we could skip this whole process um, and just jump straight to my not yellow cubed, because I'm pulling out three things, and not yellow um, is that 0.85. We do that, and we get about 61.4%, or 0.614. All right. Um, then lastly, I want to find the probability of at least one green. As we discussed last time, um, we're going to take this idea of no successes and do one minus it. So if we do one minus the probability of no successes, this time no greens instead of no yellows, one minus the probability of no successes, that will give me the probability of at least one. If you need a refresher as to why, we can just jump to this formula. Make sure to check out my last video. So a similar idea uh, of just doing one minus the probability of no, no green or green complement raised to the third. Well, we're told that 
uh, green occurs 5% of the time. So the likelihood I don't get a green is 95%, one minus that. Um, so 95% cubed, 0.95 cubed, um, gives us this 85-ish percent number. So one minus it, and we get about 14.3% or 0.143. All right, so I hope you can see how we can apply these basic probability rules. Hope this helped give you a better grasp of our basic probability, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.